In this video, I'll show you how to use the insert brushes in conjunction with Dynamesh, as well as explaining the Dynamesh projection button. And the first thing I'm going to do with this Dynamesh is actually use the insert brushes to add some surface detail. And how I'm going to do that is first I'm going to isolate this subtool, so I'm going to hit this eyeball, so it's the only one showing. And because this is based on a ZBrush primitive, I know it's symmetrical across the X, Y, and radially. So let's go ahead and turn on our transform, activate symmetry, and instead of doing across the X and Y, we'll do across radial. And we'll leave our radial count on 8 for now. And oops, looks like we need to change our radial uh, from X to Z. There we go. So now when we sculpt, it's uh, doing it in a radial fashion. But we're not going to sculpt, we're actually going to use the insert brushes. And where those are, if I hit B to bring up the brush menu and I to narrow it down to the insert brushes, you'll see they're all right here. Let's go ahead and choose insert sphere. And what an insert brush does is wherever you click and drag, it'll insert this object. And it'll ma it automatically mask the original Dynamesh. Now while it's the other original Dynamesh's mask, you can actually use transpose to move these things around position them a little bit better and you can actually sculpt on them and make different shapes as well. Um, in order to make this all one solid mesh, which right now it's two different two separate poly groups, we're going to go down to Dynamesh here under the geometry menu and how you do that is you hold down control and you swipe and what that does is unmask the original object but it's still two separate groups and because we don't have group turned on if I swipe again it's going to make this all um, one mesh. Um, with group turned on, we'll actually get into that later when you get in a slice curve, uh, but for now we can just make this one solid mesh. Another thing we can do, let's go and turn off polyframe, and we'll go to brush insert sphere again. You can hold down alt while you drag a sphere, and what that does when you hold down control and drag and then control drag again, is it runs this sub operation in the DynaMesh, and it actually makes a subtractive mesh. So you can use insert brushes and Dynamesh really quickly to build up um, detail on your surfaces. So for now, let's go ahead and we'll do a hold down alt while we drag and then we'll control drag and we'll cut out some spaces here and then we'll go ahead and actually fill this in with a sphere. And we're going to position these a little bit better. There we go. We'll control drag again. And now we've got a nice clean Dynamesh and you'll see actually uh, a little bit of that sphere went through the other back. So we, all we need to do is hold down control shift and we'll grab the clip curve and we'll just clip that back. Perfect. Now that we've got a little ornamentation going, all we're missing is the gorilla part of this. So I'm going to go back up to my subtools and turn everything back on. And for my ornament object, I'm going to go back into transform and we're going to do activate symmetry across X again. Turn off Z and uh, turn off radial. And we'll go ahead and move this up and position this really quickly. And we'll go to the side view and we'll tilt this back so it kind of matches the tilt of his head here. Alright, let's move this back just a little bit. There we go. So now uh, we kind of got a, a helmet type thing going on here. Now if I want to add this Dynamesh to this mesh, which is my Gorilla Head, and the Gorilla Head isn't a Dynamesh, it's actually, um, here's my low res mesh, and I've actually just subdivided it and sculpted it as I went. Um, but what I want to do is actually make this Gorilla Head a Dynamesh and include it and kind of uh, boolean operation it and combine it with this mesh and it's fairly simple to do. All you need to do is I'm going to move this ornament up to just below the grill head. I'm going to select the grill head and do a merge down. So now they're all one object and there's no subdivision history. So now if I go down here to Dynamesh and I hit this button, it's going to Dynamesh this whole object. Now you're going to see I lost a lot of resolution on that pass, which is still okay as a base mesh, but I want to keep these details kind of sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and I'm going to crank this resolution up to, say, 256, and hit Dynamesh again. That's a little bit better, but you can still see it's kind of getting a little bit soft. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to make my resolution 256, I'm going to turn on the Project button, and I'm going to hit Dynamesh. There we go. So what that's done is it's made this one complete solid mesh here, minus the teeth. Those are separate subtools. I'll go ahead and turn those off for now. <clears throat> So we've got one solid Dynamesh, and it's not, it didn't do all the, it didn't kind of smooth it out like the original, like because I had project on, it gave it to the blanket of quads, and then it projected that detail back through. So I got nice sharp details still from my original mesh. So now that this is all one Dynamesh, I can do all sorts of, um, you can go to brush, insert, insert sphere again. You can do all sorts of cool things. Swipe, 
and now it's all one continuous mesh. So you can continue using all the tricks that we've learned up till now to continue making this um, helmet to your liking.